Welcome to the AK user part next episode in a series and today we are actually going to talk about shooting the AK rifle so let me take these off we don't need them for now and uh, guys right off the bat I want to talk about the recoil management uh, because this is one of the most shocking points for the a fresh brand new AK users uh, they purchase the rifle in a 7.62 by 39 and they are quickly realizing that the rifle has more recoil because of that uh, little round has enough juice in the cartridge to actually cause some stink so how we can better manage the recoil on the AK rifle to get it most out of it the first of all is the uh, position or a uh, posture how you hold the rifle when you are shooting so as you notice i usually lean a lot forward on the rifle so my all upper body is leaning forward towards the muzzle end and i'll explain in a second why basically this is how i'm shooting and it doesn't matter if the shooting is happening from the kneeling or from the standing position my upper body from belt line up i'm bending that body leaning towards the rifle so i'm going towards the muzzle and on the rifle and here's the simple reason why is this happening so let's discuss for a second uh, after you press the trigger and you, the primer is being struck by the firing pin what is happening so you have uh, like two shock waves happening at that uh, moment or one after the, the another one uh, and they are all contributing to the recoil so first is detonation control detonation in the chamber uh, the ignition of the powder and the bullet is flying through the uh, muzzle and uh, through the barrel and you can see right away you will see the waves coming the barrel whip everything up here is moving but this is not and this is like the first uh, shock wave happening based on the ignition from the cartridge uh, there is not that much going on yet going backwards there is energy coming backwards uh, and you have to remember for the stamped receivers uh, because uh, this is a very thin receiver you will start feeling it right that that shockwave uh, usually the rear post uh, is jumping uh, sometimes if that lever for the gas tube is loose you will see the lever will jump uh, in a slow motion but this is not the it's really not that bad yet the next thing what is happening is the bolt carrier and the bolt are traveling backwards so you got that motion here and then the recoil spring kicks in and pushes forward of course the next round is getting stripped from the rifle and reloaded to the chamber and the whole salku repeats but when that bolt carrier travels on the rail over here towards the rear end of the rifle this is what causes a lot of uh, recoil effect uh, on the shooter because this is that force this is basically i'll remove the recoil spring for now but this is basically that force which is traveling traveling see traveling and boom it's pushing the shooter back so all that motion creates a lot of disturbance and this is that force working towards the axis right here horizontal axis and it's going back straight to the shooter so as i told you the idea is to control to better control that recoil force coming out coming back at you is to lean forward so you're putting more body weight to absorb that shock wave it, it is going to be a shock wave no matter what because that bolt carrier has to travel somewhere so the only way to absorb it is the, the, the end of the receiver is stuck in your body and by putting more leaning more towards more forward you got more body mass to con better control that recoil so right off the bat i'll advise you uh, 
any time when you're shooting with the rifle, that upper body, that upper body should lean towards the front end of the muzzle. That's like a rule number one with 7.62 by 39 cartridge. Now, what are the other things what we can do uh, to help to manage the recoil? Uh, one of the easiest solutions, of course, is uh, to use some salt of the muzzle brake. The muzzle brake usually takes a lot of energy and it helps you to better control the rifle. Remember, you still have to deal with that impulse coming back from the bolt carrier. This is not going to change. That end of the bolt, bolt carrier has to travel on the rails, reload, bounce back and reload the next round to the chamber. That's how the AK rifle works. But the muzzle brake will ease up the effects, uh, feeling effects from the first uh, shockwave. This is right after the ignition when the bullet is uh, leaving the uh, muzzle end, leaving the barrel. So this would help to control the, the basically that effect. So the muzzle uh, device, the muzzle brake, like here we got the fighter brake or like on this pimped rifle, I'm using a Meridian Defense, a BD2, very good brakes uh, and for the price and they offer a lot of forgiveness uh, for the shooter. Uh, you, you will feel the effect uh, versus uh, like with fighter brake versus a slant brake immediately, it will help you out. Uh, another thing, a popular solution is between the users, they are upgrading uh, recoil springs to more uh, stiff uh, recoil springs uh, and uh, like ALG has uh, some solutions, uh, also Wolf has some solutions, Wolf Springs and uh, they, they basically what's happening is if uh, that recoil spring is uh, stiff then uh, it's absorbing that energy here better and uh, it, it helps to absorb that shock wave coming your way from the rear end of the rifle. The one thing which I would say, uh, if you have really like a beat up recoil spring because you have a parts kit gun, uh, it's a good idea to replace it with the, with the special ALG, ALG springs are really, really good. Uh, but the down uh, effect of this could be if you got the stronger force, you know, absorbing that energy here and that uh, spring is stiffer, remember you will have that bolt carrier now traveling with the bigger force forward and it ca you can have, I, I've seen some shooters overreacting then because the bolt uh, was slamming forward from that motion, from the spring, from that extra coil energy from the uh, spring. So that's something to keep in mind and uh, you have to uh, account for it that this, this probably is going to happen when that bolt carrier right now will be coming back. Remember that energy uh, that always has to go somewhere, right? It's a neutral loss, uh, nothing disappears in the world, it's just simple physics. Uh, another thing uh, what I have seen too, a lot of AK rifles uh, is simply overgassed. So they are pushing way too much uh, gases backwards and that's why you have very violent motion uh, of the bolt carrier and the bolts. So what I have seen, and, and this is radical, I take no responsibility for your fuck-ups. Uh, if you will do it, it's totally on you. But some people like to basically make the cutouts on the uh, piston head so they make the cutouts and uh, depends on how you know why why that cutout is uh, they bleed more gases from the gas block uh, through the system so because you got the cutouts and then uh, that uh, they they controlling they trying to control by this the motion of uh, the bolt carrier well the the bad thing about it is if you will overdo it uh, you may bleed so much gas that the rifle won't cycle so uh, be aware i strongly encourage you uh, don't do that on if you will go that route don't do that on the rifles which you really care about it if you have like really cool spar uh, the, the parts kits uh, build gun don't do it okay don't don't be that guy uh, as an interesting point, I have seen the KNS Precision is coming out to the market with the P1 
piston head which will allow uh, to adjust the uh, amount of the gas going back to the gas system. I'm not, I, have not, I have not seen that device yet in my hands. Uh, I'm guessing it will be uh, dedicated more towards the suppressors, uh, but maybe they have something even for the regular uh, AK users. Uh, even if you, you know, just if you, if, if, even if you're dealing with the situation where basically by default your AK is overgas, maybe that will be usable. Once I got more details, uh, I will show you that KNS device and we'll talk about it. Another solution is, of course, the uh, if you can build the AK and you can put the parts together to have that adjustable gas block. Uh, the Definitive Arms is coming out uh, right now with the adjustable gas block and you will have a control uh, about that amount of the gases pushed back through the system by simply turning the control knob on the gas block and that will help to control uh, the gas system and it will basically smooth out. You can fine trim it and you can smooth out the action of the uh, rifle, how it cycles and how it performs. The one thing about the definitive arm solution is, of course, you would have to replace the gas block. So you would have to pull out the front post and then put the new gas block. So uh, there, it's not like a drop in solution for the average user. Uh, with uh, you know, we'll see what the KNS solution can can do, and uh, maybe that will be the ultimate answer. But basically, a recoil spring, replacing a recoil spring, uh, is one of the solutions to control the overgassed uh, rifle. Uh, radical solution, making a cutouts on the piston head, uh, and of course, then you have aftermarket. So we talk about holding the rifle and shooting and uh, trying to utilize your upper body to better control the recoil. Uh, as far as holding the rifle in your hands, and there are, you can of course use that uh, front handguard uh, to, to hold the rifle like this, right? I do that very often, but the one thing to remember too, if you will push a lot of rounds, uh, and especially if you will shoot quickly, uh, on average uh, three to four magazines, guys, if you're doing some uh, fast shooting drills, you have to remember that no matter what you have up front, that thing will start getting hot, and it will start getting hot, hot really, really quick. So uh, always run gloves always run gloves with the AK. Uh, I'll, I'll answer it to you right away. I either use the Camelback Motorsports gloves or the Outdoor Research gloves. I really don't care. Um, the gloves are, is something what you have to keep cycling every three to four months. You have to buy the new pair. That's how it works, okay? Uh, I'm not really attached to the brands, but uh, going back to holding the rifle, so if you will utilize that uh, forward grip, like this, just be aware, especially if you have an Ultimac on the top, Ultimacs get hot even after a few rounds when you will shoot because it's a basically railed gas tube. So if you're putting, a, you know, like if you're touching it with your thumb or fingers, you have a large hands, wear gloves because you will burn yourself. And uh, I have seen people burned by AK uh, many, many, many times. So you don't wanna be that guy as far as grips and holding the rifles. Uh, uh, of course, if you would like to utilize the Costa grip, right, so-called Costa grip, you have to be retarded to do so because you're basically obstructing the completely the line of sight on the AK. Uh, maybe with the red dot, if you have a red dot or some sort of the optic, you could do it. But uh, other than this, you're gonna get burned extremely fast. Uh, you will learn that this grip doesn't really work uh, very well on the AK rifle and I don't care even if you have uh, extended rails, I'm telling you the heat coming out from the system and that's the nature of the beast with the AK, you will start feeling it very, very uh, quickly. So can you shoot, you know, if you have extended rails, can you shoot like this? Yes, you can, uh, but be aware of the heat. You have to deal with the heat. That's, speaking about the heat, why the the uh, Magwell grip is very popular still with the AKs and this is basically because this is the spot, this is the spot, this is the grip which allows you to hold the rifle for the extended periods of time and you are not feeling any heat coming out 
from the handguards or, or from that gas system. So the Magwell grip is still used across the world, uh, especially in Russia, they still using the Magwell grip. Uh, just remember, kind of keep, try to keep always your thumb down towards the end of the muzzle and this is especially for the uh, left-handed uh, shooters because then if you switching and you're shooting from this side right you're shooting from this side if you will extend that uh, thumb like this it's going to get smacked by the charging handle uh, you're not going to break it but i have seen some people uh, damage their uh, nails on the fingers uh, or or you know got burst bruised by the uh, sheer force of the charging handle. It's not bad, okay? It's not going to break off your finger or anything, but you will quickly learn to keep that thumb down, basically when holding with your right hand the magazine, all right? So, but the magazine, make well grip, this is still utilized. It's still very popular uh, across the world. And there is a reason why people use it. And uh, it has a lot of to do with the heat uh, uh, transfer on the AK up front. Uh, so it, I'm not going to, this is not the episode, you know, to, to tell you that uh, one way of holding the rifle is better than the other one, but this is, I'm pointing out to you the issues and the ways to deal with it. If you have a better solution, if something is working better for you, by all means, uh, keep using it and uh, that's fine with me. Another thing to remember, on the buttstock, uh, with the regular wood buttstock uh, on AK, you have the, it's a basically a bare metal at the end. So what's happening is when you're wearing a t-shirt, you very often I see the people have a problem controlling that stock welded to the to the t-shirt because that stock is sliding on their t-shirt and this is because they have just that bare metal as you can see on my AK I basically used a 3M scotch tape uh, this is uh, for like people and for the contractors who are putting the stairs they putting that tape on to hold uh, like carpets I guess and things like this so I just went to the Ace hardware store I purchased the one roll for like $19.99 and uh, I'm making my own cutouts and I'm gluing it and this immediately improves the way how the stock stays on my cloths, uh, any kind of cloths, even on the winter jackets or whatever, it doesn't move, it's glued to my body and it helps. Now, speaking about the stocks, this is a classic Warsaw packed length of the stock, of the wood stock and as you can see, for me, this stock it really is too short. Uh, I love the, the classic look AKs and as you can see, I got the AKs which are looking, you know, they are kept in the basic wood. Uh, but basically, if I will do the standard measurement and the best way to tell you if the stock, uh, if the rifle is fitting you is do this, extend your arm, put the stock to that, uh, basically here to that, uh, pocket with your elbow and see where your hand, your hand should comfortably grip the rifle. So I should put it like this and I should, I shouldn't push my hand backwards or twist it. It should be at the distance like I will grip it here. So as you can see, as you can see, uh, my head is too long. My forearm is too long. I'm past the grip. The grip for me should be with that stock here. And uh, unfortunately, this stock is just simply too short for my forearm. Can I still use it? Of course I can. I can maneuver and to move that rifle and manage and uh, keep shooting it. But this is not my perfect length of the stock. Now I'm forcing myself to fit into the rifle. And that's a big no-go. You should always make a tool to fit you, your tool should be as comfortable as possible, not the other way around. You should never fit yourself to the tool. You should always fit the tool to you. So we'll talk about this in a second when I will switch to this rifle and I'll tell you, tell you the solutions how we can address that issue. Another thing is the grip, the pistol grip. The regular AK pistol grip is very small. 
And again, I have a large hands. I'm not telling you this is a bad grip. I'm not telling you this is not working. Yes, of course it works. A lot of people is using the basic grips. For me, I like to change to other grips. And again, we'll go back to it. But if you wanna keep the regular grip, I found out that using a tennis racket grip tape, and you can wrap it around, and it increases the thickness of the grip. So it works better for, with, for the people with the large hands. It, it really helps and uh, that's what I'm doing on almost all my AKs, even with the, with the aftermarket grips, I put the tennis racket uh, grip tape and it's not so much for sliding, I, I, it will improve, you know, the friction, you will hold it better, but when you got the gloves, the usually with gloves you control the grip very well, but it is to increase the thickness of the grip, so I'm more comfortable behind my rifle. But let me put that classic AK away, and here is basically my favorite setup. This is how I set up my uh, rifles, my, my basically uh, 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 you know personal rifles for the use so immediately you will see uh, I literally I always run the M4 stock adapters and uh, I will give you all the links at the bottom of the video guys so don't go crazy just read the description under the video and you will see what I'm using and uh, the links will be provided there but I have the M4 stock adapter then I'm using uh, the stock. Uh, I was searching uh, for a lot of, you know, I spent a lot of time searching for the perfect stock. Um, I like very um, mission first tactical uh, BMS stocks, but I find out recently that FAB Defense stock, and as you can see, they got the clamp on cheek risers, and you can adjust the height of the cheek, cheek riser. It's got a three positions, uh, but like for this setup, when I got that 3x uh, prism scope with ACSS from Primar Arms, all you, it's a it's a you know basically a zero position for that cheek riser, and you got the perfect level. You, you are basically like this on the rifle and this is extremely comfortable position and uh, you can engage the targets and have a lot of fun by using this cheek riser uh, so but the m4 stock adapter adjustable length of pull i can now adjust the length of the pull of the stock uh, i see perfect this is like right for me for the guy with the long arms this is a perfect if i'm running the body armor uh, or uh, I got the thicker clothing because we are in Midwest so in winter I'll be uh, I'll grow here because I'll have more clothing on me then I can adjust my length of the stock to compensate for that thickness of the items I'm wearing so as I said could be a body armor could be a, a basically a winter clothing but this give me gives me a flexibility of what I can do uh, um, and I can hear the critics saying right away, well, this is a K rifle, you know, uh, screw this. If I will have, if I want to have a collapsible stock, I can go with AR. Uh, guys, these stocks are, are not just for the ARs. Uh, why not to use something what makes sense? As I said, make the tool fit you. Don't fit and force yourself to the tool. You should be comfortable behind the rifle, not other way around. Next thing which I'm running on my personal case is of course that 3x scope. This is an absolutely must-have item for me. You can quickly see it's not just for the shooting guys. It improves the field. You can really see what's happening down the field. Uh, you can take that scope with that scope we're shooting. Uh, remember the Vapor uh, 5000 rounds test episode accuracy testing. We're shooting at 500 yards and you can put the rounds into the tight group using that uh, scope uh, even at extended ranges. It's pre-calibrated for the 762 by 39 and with this, uh, this is basically our annihilator package. This is like a wet dream for the AK user. And uh, up front, I do, I always try to put some sort of the rail. In this situation, this is a Midwest Industries uh, short rail, uh, but it could be a Magpul uh, rail. I really don't care, uh, anything works. Uh, with the Midwest Industries, please be aware, this is the device which clamps to the barrel. 
uh, on some rifles it may affect the accuracy because it's infecting uh, the barrel harmonics. On this rifle it doesn't matter, but I had the rifle, I think it was Palmetto State Armory, where I had the issues with accuracy because of the clamp. On this rifle it works perfectly fine. But why I'm doing this? So, we talk about the heat, the ways to deal with the heat. I put the small uh, forward grip like this and it's not interfering with the magazine changes. As you can see, that short one, it's not bothering me or anything. I can quickly change the magazine. It's not affecting the performance of uh, reloading. But it offers to me, I can right now hold the rifle like this and I can get away more from the rail. So all I'm doing is I'm locking right now my fist like this and I'm holding the rifle by the forward grip. I still have outstanding control up front because I can use it, push it towards uh, you know, uh, my body and I can control rifle better and it shields me. It's another layer of protection to get away from that heat. So this works very, very well for me. Again, links are in the video description, you will see for everything. And as far as forends, this is a Midwest Industries forend, but I also used the Magpul and things like this, they work very well. As for the top, uh, I'm kind of sold on those cheese grater. As you can see, they got a lot of holes. They, it's basically, it's not just for the looks, it helps a little bit, uh, it helps a little bit to circulate the heat and get rid of the heat faster. If you have something like with the wood, like on this rifle, right? You have basic wood, but what is this happening? You are enclosing and trapping that heat and it takes a little bit longer uh, to circulate the heat and exchange it and get rid of it. So uh, it, it is a value add to me. It helps. It's not much, but it helps a little bit. And uh, then, of course, I put, um, I'm very often on my rifles, uh, I have ALG trigger. This is a very short reset trigger and uh, it allows you to shoot faster and accurately. And of course, uh, then there is an enhanced safety lever from WBP. Those are outstanding. They are very well made. They are made for the uh, Polish military as well and they work just great. But that's basically what is happening. These are the reasons why I'm doing those things on my rifles. It has nothing to do with the looks. Uh, some may say it looks ugly. Uh, 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 compared to the wood, probably it does, right? I love wood. I really, I mean, <laughs> you guys don't get stupid ideas. You know what wood I'm talking about, wood on a rifle. Uh, so, you know, by aesthetics, yes, this is beautiful. This looks beautiful. But as for using it and getting most out of it, this is the setup which I'm going to run. And you can see the weight below. Uh, this is the, the weight for the rifle in the full setup and how much, you know, we added is just a little bit compared to the rifle uh, without uh, any enhancements. But look how much more effective you could be with the setup like this and how much joy you can have from shooting AK rifle. So that's pretty much it guys in this episode. I want you to have fun. I want you to hit the range, have fun, have fun from shooting and enjoy this hobby because this is awesome hobby and you can really have a great time using AK type rifles. Thanks for watching and please stay tuned for the next episodes.